Uh, the name is DJ Simon, the best in ever. Radio's mayor. Do the drive time show on YFM between 3 and 7 o'clock. It's the only drive time show that matters. I'm also a correspondent on the BBC World Service. The show is called This is Africa with DJ Edu. So if you go to any radio station, you head out to their website. Uh, they'll always have music details and how you can submit your music there. But I always advise young artists, or just artists in general, and even artist managers, to set up an appointment with the music manager. A music manager is a guy who leads the direction of how the station is going to sound music-wise. These are the people that source out music trends in different parts of the world and how it's going to work here in the South African context if it's a South African radio station. Mm -hmm. This is the guy that initiates relationships with record labels, independent labels, uh, stays in touch with what's happening on the ground. But the core playlist of every radio station is put together by the music team. You know, So the music team can be made up of three or five people and then there's a committee that's made up of different people that will come through and listen to the pool of music that they've found. Then it's streamlined to a couple of songs they will then be injected to the playlist. So it's a team of people that work to make the station sound a certain way and then there's people then then load up the music onto the station. Even if you get five minutes of their time just to put face to the name, it goes a long way, you know, when the music manager knows you and you guys have met. Set up a meeting with a music manager, tell them what you do, find out what's, what's the kind of sound they're looking for on the station, what's their direction, what's their strategy. It makes it easy for you to submit music to that person also. So I think it's very important for you to know what's the sound of the station, what are they trying to do and where they're trying to go. That way you know of all the artists within your catalogue or all the artists you're managing or you as an artist, where do you fit in, in the station's direction. So all stations have the policy where you can drop off the music at reception, trust me, everyone listens to that music. Even if you drop it at reception, your song will get heard, but you must also ensure like your song stands out. You know, if you're going to be doing the same trap that everyone else is doing, obviously, you're not going to get that immediate reaction that the next guy is going to have. So just put in time, do the research. That's how you get your music on the radio. I think it's very important for you to make research. What artists normally do is they will send the same radio edits to YFM and Metro FM and 5. But a song on Y sounds so different than on 5 FM because 5 there's certain words that they don't allow and at Y there's certain words that they allow. So there needs to be a YFM edit. So you need to make sure like all the stations you're sampling the music to, what's their tone, what's their sound. So when you send the music to them, you're sending the right edits. So most artists will normally have the original, a cappella, radio edit, and then the radio edit is sent everywhere. That's the first step. Second step, why are we choosing this single as the single to sample to these stations? Next step, who are we sending the music to? Sometimes it's great to test out the song via specialist shows. So you can sample the song, for example, to PH on the cruise control on, on, on Metro. It's a specialist show. He chooses the music that he plays there. Then you can sample it to Five, to Miss Cosmo. She chooses the music she plays there. Then you can come to Y, sample it to DJ Zandi. He chooses the music he plays there. Based on the reaction that you get from all, this, from the, all those specialist shows, then they will tell you, yo, sample this song to the station. You know what I mean? Because people have given you positive reactions. Or they'll take it and suggest it to the music committee and say, yo, guys, I found this song from this kid. I think it's dope. So it works also that way where you approach the DJs, the DJs will do the hard work for you where they will take it to the music managers. And chances of you actually getting on radio are higher when you've reached out to the specialist shows for them to recommend the song for, for the station's playlist because it's been tested, it's been played on the radio and there's been a reaction to the song. Also find out the mix DJs. Every radio station in the country right now, uh, especially music stations, have a DJ that mixes. You know, go for that DJ and say, yo, this is my song, can you please put it in your mix? That mix is broadcast to a whole lot of people, if they love the song, they're like, yo, whose song is that? And the music managers are normally listening to the mixes because these are the guys that are finding the diamonds in the rough. And then if the song gets a great reaction and the response now being on social media, because social media plays a big role, like if everyone is talking about the song, it makes sense to put it on the, you know, on the playlist and you know, we'll pull in the market. So it just requires you to do the homework and then when it's time for you to execute and to put the music out there, especially with sampling it on the radio, 
it becomes easier for you to consistently put the music out there. Social media is very important, but I do not want people to feel like your song is only played because you have a massive following, right? If you have a great following online, it's great for you. If you don't have a great following online, that's a better story to tell. Like right now I'm doing this thing, Keeping It 100, where I'm finding these kids on online, they playing me their music. I take the kid and I put him on the platform, then I put him on the radio, then they come back to me, they say, yo, savvy bro, like this morning, there's a, a young and hit me up saying, yo bro, I had 800 streams. I woke up this morning, I'm sitting on 5,000 streams. I didn't even think I'd hit 2,000. That makes you feel good because you've exposed this talent to over four, 5,000 people that didn't know about them. And that goes a long way. So now he has new ears that are listening to the music. It's about what they're going to feed them next. But don't think like social media is the only determining factor for you to become the next big thing. So yeah, also I think immediate circles are very important. Like if your friends support you, chances of you actually becoming the next big thing are higher because it's, it's generally people that know you better than anyone else. You know, one thing artists should stop doing, right? And I'm gonna make a comparison. So when I started playing music from outside of South Africa with the Africa Boombox, one thing that stands out from artists outside of South Africa is they will say, yo bro, here's my project, you know? It's an EP, it's got seven songs, but track four is a shit. Bro, I'm gonna start with track four. I remember one day, it was an MTV summit, and it was Peter Paul from P Square who says, dude, like when we started getting into the game, we'd go to the DJs, yes, we got an album, but we'll tell them that track number seven is the best thing you've ever heard in your life. Man, like, if you sell your song like that, even if it's sitting right next to me and I'm driving, like this dude said track number seven is the best thing that I've ever heard. The curiosity in me wants to know. I'll take it and I'll go straight to number seven. If number seven bangs, bro, I'm gonna go to number one because now I wanna get the whole story. It takes 30 seconds for someone to give you an opportunity with radio. And with music, I think you got the same thing. Like the first 30 seconds, I can make up my mind whether I wanna listen to the song or not. So I think that's what artists need to do. When you hook me up with your music, tell me, sell your song, pitch your song. What makes the song the best song that I've ever heard in my life? Start there. Also with artist managers, stop suggesting, you know, dog, eh, I got this kid, I found, eh, I got 4.5. Hey, dog, if your music is dope, why are you talking about money? Like, artist managers do that, and I think that's what also turns us off as genuine lovers of the music. You can't feed me money and think I'm gonna take your money and then listen to the music. No, if your music is dope, your music is going to stand out. And that's what sucks because now, every time this guy comes forward and says, here's my music, I'm always going to associate him with money and I'm never going to start listening to anything that he sends my way. So always just sell the music for its true form and its true art and stop bringing all these other things on the side. And when it comes to Ipayola, to all these young artists, it's usually your manager that puts the money forward without us asking for any forms of money. It's illegal to take any money uh, for playlisting on radio. If it's ever happened to you where someone has come forward and said, yo, you need to pay me X amount of money, you know, screen match that conversation, save that, send it to the radio station. We really need to get rid of all these people because they're literally ruining the entire ecosystem with this radio business and getting true artists on the air. So I think it starts there with artists being more vocal on who is taking money. I think we need to encourage people to come out and say who is taking money. Stop also like, you know what sucks is an artist having a dope song. Now it's time to do PR. Now y'all niggas are late, always. You're late for all interviews. You're coming through with 30 dudes for interviews. Take yourself seriously, man. Like, I think that's also another problem with this modern generation of some superstars is that you meet some really dope artists, but they just don't have the right people around them. You know, I think the people you have around you shows what kind of value they have in you and what they bring into your life. But for some artists, I just think they just think life is, like this music thing is just about looking nice, appearing for interviews and being famous. Nah, man, like, respect your fans, man. If you're gonna set up an appointment to meet up with them for an interview on TV, on radio, or even an online platform or a magazine, just honor it, communicate if you're gonna be late. I think that's what artists don't do. If you're gonna be submitting also a, a single on the radio via CD, I'm sure, man, like there's a friend of yours that can print out uh, an artwork or something. You can't bring a blank CD 
to the station. Like you bring this blank CD, we hear a dope song, you don't know who this artist is, it's not on Shazam, it's nowhere online, you didn't leave your numbers. What happens? We take the CD, we put it on the side because we can't load the song untitled, untitled. Doesn't make sense. And I think that happens a lot where some young talented artists just don't have room. Man, 50 cent, I'm sure for 50 cent, you can negotiate with some guy who owns an internet cafe that instead of one rand, you got 50 cent, they will print out something for you. Even if you go to Microsoft and you say, artist name, contact details, all that stuff. Please take advantage of that. Artists, stop submitting your music without sample details. I think sample is very important for any artist, period. Like, I think once your song is done, your next step is sample before you go to any station. So educate yourself on that. Besides using your data on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook, use data to source out information that will, that will uplift you as an artist. We don't have that much influence on the playlists, right? But it also varies on the DJ, right? There's a music team that sources out the music that you'll hear on my show. But there are certain features that I have where I have editorial power. So I might not have 100% full control over my playlist, but I have 20% of what I can do with my playlist so my personality can come out through the music. And we suggest to the music team. I think also with, with most shows, you will hear a DJ will, will have a feature or, or whatever of some sort that you can distinctively tell that, oh, you picked the song. On my show, we have the Africa Boombox. It's an hour where I play bangers from across the continent. I've been doing this for eight years. So that is me. That whole hour is me, the station. Um, I think, yeah, like every, every DJ has some form of input on the music they play. Sometimes you might not bring in a new song, but you can always go to the music team and say, yo, can you move this song, put that song, give me that one, and then, you know, you just make it work according to sometimes how you feel it. Yeah. I think there's lots of those. For example, Casper's one of those artists, you know, came out of nowhere, had one song, and I also like using Kaz as an example because dude was promoting one freaking song for the whole year. Guys don't do that no more. Like, a dude will drop one song, it becomes a smash, and next song. Kaz ran with one song, I think it was Kushesha, for the whole freaking year before he dropped the follow-up single, you know, which was Dog Shabal Heza. And I think that's something that shows a true artistry where you believe in your song so much, and you're just gonna use that as an introduction to everyone, and then you start giving us a shitload of music. But to answer your question, there are a few case studies, man, where artists have come forward and dropped their music, and they've become these superstars. Uh, Elaine is one of them I can mention right now. Definitely Casper. Juice Back was also a moment where this kid, everyone was talking about, uh, it ended up on a playlist and then with the support of DJs, it became this monster of a song and that was Nasty C. There's always a few, especially on us, like on, on Y, like dudes we just find on the net and we just put them straight on the playlist. Uh, and we've never met them before and then it builds up to to interviews and all that kind of stuff. Uh, how do you move from low to high? It's, it's reactions. It's how people respond to the music. It also counts as how many DJs did not skip your song. If a DJ sees your song on the playlist, do they play it or do they skip it? So if a song from Core is getting mad play um, on all the shows that it's been scheduled on, it means that the DJs are loving it. It means that the people are asking for the song. That, yo, I heard this song from this kid uh, late at night, can I hear it, you know? Sometimes what I also do is, the songs you wouldn't hear during the day, you hear them at night. So I tend to listen to my colleagues at night to hear what kind of music they have. Then I'll go to the music team and say, yo, I heard this song at 12 at midnight. Can I just get it also in daytime? That also helps because it means that, okay, there's something with this song. Then it moves up with the levels of the station and then you start getting real rotation. Yeah. When you hear a song on the radio, it reaches more people, it hits more ground, and you're most likely going to get more bookings. You know, if more people know about your music, everyone is singing about you, everyone is talking about you online, it means bookings. If you want solid bookings, you want to be on the radio, you know, hence the DJs in the streets are always mad. Why do radio DJs mix DJs who are on radio on TV? 
you know, getting the shows is because they're on a traditional platform that exposes them to a whole lot of people. We're seeing it now with Lockdown that's hosted by Shimza and PH. All those DJs are now getting a whole lot of bookings and that is what traditional media is there for, to expose you to a bigger market, a market that doesn't even know about Twitter or Facebook. They know about it, but they don't check it on an everyday basis, but they have the money to pay for your shows. So that's where we come in, to sell your music to these people so you can get the money through Samro and through these gigs. Have your hood back you up, man. You can't try and get the whole of hard thing to mess with your stuff when people in your hood don't even know you're an artist. I think just sell your music to your hood, let everyone embrace you that you're super talented, do shows, do all these things that by the time you get on to the next side of a how thing. So if you're from Springs and then you, you're moving into a Tembisa, you move from Tembisa to Foslo, from Foslo to Bram, you're slowly building an audience. All these people start talking about you. By the time YFM picks you up, or by the time Sabi hears about you, and I talk about you, people respond and say, yo, Sabi, you just found out about this kid now? Get out of here, man. Like, that's also what's happening right now with Keeping It 100. This thing I'm doing on Instagram is that I'm finding out about these kids that are genuinely talented, the Ben Septembers, Lazy B, uh, Prime the Gift, uh, Jamino, all these other kids. I'm like, yo, y'all are genuinely talented, Coochie Cola. Like, there's so many of these talented youngins that I'm being introduced to now, but everyone is responding on social media saying, yo, Sabi, you should listen to this project they did a few years ago. You should listen to that, listen to that. I'm like, oh, okay. There is a new wave that's coming through with South African music, but we who are considered gatekeepers or people at the gate, we just need to open up the door and let these kids come through. And my biggest fear now with South African music is that if we come out of lockdown and we do not have 10 or 7 new artists that are new on the playlist and they're rocking. We really have a big problem. We can't come out of this lockdown and we still have the top 5 being the top 5 or the top 10 being the top 10. Then there's really gatekeepers. Then there's really, really a big problem. It's evident that there are talented people, but there's something that happens in the middle. We can't come out of this lockdown with the same superstars like last year. I totally disagree. We can't. Focus on your art, man. Focus on your music, focus on your art, focus on feeding your fans. Fans will also suggest your songs to us, you know. If fans truly believe that everyone needs to know you, they will suggest you, they will put you forward. I have this feature on a Friday on my show, it's called The Put On. And what The Put On is all about is, tell us about an artist you have discovered that you feel like everyone needs to know about you. There's so many guys that hit us up and say, yo, Seb, you need to check out so and so. And all these moments, you know, everyone looks you up and then they start listening to your music. It goes a long way. So it's all these small efforts your fans will do to get you to the next level. So feed your market, feed your following, consistently reach out to radio stations, consistently, you know, feed music on the online spaces, do interviews with websites. So when people look you up online, there's more that comes out, you know, than just your YouTube and Facebook and Instagram. Let there be content, some articles about you. It sucks to find a new artist and there's nothing online. Like there's no bio, even the Facebook bio is so old, it's not updated. There's so much now, I think, for new artists that allows them to put out content about themselves. So by the time you get your first big break single, there's so much content out there about you that immediately you reach superstar level because everyone starts messing with all the other songs that you've released. It takes one song to open up the door so we can all start listening to your music. But yeah, like don't focus so much on radio. Yeah, radio will come. It's great for you to consistently give us the music, but build here. Let everyone around you believe in you so much that they push you to get there. Radio. Yeah. It depends what's your idea of success, you know? Uh, some people feel like money means you're successful. Some people feel like being able to change lives through music is success. Some people feel like being able to do what you love and be able to cover all my bills is success. So it's relative, you know, for some artists, not being on radio is I can still live off my YouTube streams. I can still live off the money I'm getting on all my streams. It's success. So I think that answer or that question, it's, it's up to you. What exactly do you want music to do for your life? You know, I can't be the one to sit here and say, 
if you know how to radio, your music ain't shit. Because there's guys like Chance the Rapper who literally were not signed for a minute. I don't know if he was signed already, but he was able to create like a massive name for himself through people supporting him and showing him love. And that was feeding him and he was able to live his great life and was able to, to become one of the first artists, I think, was on SoundCloud and ended up with a Grammy uh, nomination. So it's all the, the efforts you put in. You know, I don't think all the stations around the world were playing Tyler the Creator when he started doing his thing, you know. But eventually radio started playing him because the kids were talking about him. Um, so you can literally change the book by you being unique, you know. But if you're gonna follow the template like everyone else, obviously you're gonna be touched when things don't go your way. But if you're gonna change the book, everyone's gonna come back to you and say, oh, yo, man, you were able to flip the script. How do you do it? So you become a pioneer. But being a pioneer means you need to be ready to bleed, to be stabbed, to be called names. And if you're not strong enough to do it, then just follow the book.